Hello everyone. Now we're going to talk about the Poisson distribution. And there is a relationship between the Poisson distribution and the binomial distribution. And to make that link, let's start as follows. Imagine here you have a material or a population. Now you took a large sample and these samples in this case a material that has atoms of radioactive substance and you took this sample and this sample has 10,000 atoms so n is large 10,000 atoms of radioactive substance now the probability that a given atom will decay in a one minute time period is 0.0002 now this probability is constrained by time in binomial no there was no constraint it's just the probability of success or failure here you can still think of it as a probability of success or failure a decay could be a failure so that is the probability of failure or a decay but the only difference is you have this one minute time and some application it's one volume of space so that's the only difference now the question is, let x represent the number of atoms that decay in one minute. So now I want to know in one minute how many atoms out of the 10,000 decay. If I think of this as a binomial and I kind of solve it as a binomial, then that's the probability. Probability of the random variable x has this value. Here little x could be a thousand atom decay. Little x can be anything. So this will be n little x and for example you may be interested in knowing what's the probability a thousand of the ten thousand will decay time the probability of decay and there are little x thousand atom decay time the probability of atom did not decay which is n minus x now if we solve this problem it will be ten thousand and if little x is a thousand that will be a thousand time 0.0002 x is a thousand time one minus 0 0.0002 ten thousand minus a thousand is nine thousand now if you try to calculate this it's gonna be a long way and you will get the correct answer so when n is large and p is small like this so n time p is a rule of thumb less than 10 so you have very large n, very small p. Then I can think of the binomial distribution as a Poisson distribution. And instead of having for the binomial distribution two parameter n, the number of time you run the experiment or the trial, and x, the number of success, now we're going to create a new parameter that is associated with the Poisson distribution it's lambda np that lambda is the average of occurrence or rate of occurrence per time or space so in this case in this example lambda will be the rate of decay per minute then i can think of a binomial as a poisson distribution so the application for poisson distribution is when you are in a scenario and you are running an experiment and you have the rate of success, the rate of decay, the rate of spread of a bacteria. So you are giving lambda, which is the rate of occurrence per unit time or per unit space. And you are asked to find what's the probability X will be a thousand or X will be five. Then you can use a Poisson distribution. And the definition for probability mass function of X, if we think of X as a Poisson, random variable with a parameter lambda which is the rate of occurrence per unit time then that will be the probability probability the random variable x will equal little x which is could be 10 20 50 is the exponential minus lambda a rate of occurrence time lambda the rate of occurrence to the power of x how many times it happened divided by x factorial and that will give you the probability the event occur x time if you know the rate of occurrence and if i plot this function here for different value of lambda that will be the plot here and let's just see it magnified here this is the plot for different lambda 
and lambda is the rate of occurrence so when lambda is large the peak will always happen at the rate of occurrence when lambda is large like 9 then this is the plot and the peak is here if the rate of occurrence is 9 then if you run the experiment many many times will have this x will equal 9 because you're going to have a peak here then x will have larger value the probability is reduced or x has a lower value the probability reduce okay now the next thing is we need to find the mean of the random variable x well if we think of x and we don't care about time if we think of x as the number of occurrence for poison is the number of occurrence per unit time or per unit volume but if we just think of x as a binomial i don't put too much emphasis on the happening in a specific period of time then the mean of x will be the same as the mean of x for a binomial and we found the binomial the average of x equal n the number of trial time the probability of success and now if I think of x include the constraint of time, then this will be just lambda. n time p will give you the rate of occurrence per unit time. And that would be the mean of x. Now, if I try to find the variance of x for a binomial, we found it to be n p time 1 minus p. And we showed that. We proved it. Now, if I think of x put the time constraint or the space constraint now I can think of it as a Poisson and NP this one is just lambda and we said for a binomial to be a Poisson P here has to be very very small like 0.0001 so if P is very very small then this quantity 1 minus P is just gonna be the same as 1 and this will be lambda so for a Poisson distribution then, the variance of the random variable x is just lambda. And again, lambda is n time p, which is the rate of occurrence per unit time or per unit space. Let's take this example. Assume that the number of hits on a certain website during a fixed time interval follows a Poisson distribution. Assume the mean rate of the hits is 5 per minute. So lambda is 5 per minute. Now the question is find the probability that there will be exactly 8 hits in the next minute. So they want to know what is the probability that x will equal 8 hits in the next minute then this will be e minus lambda time lambda x divided by x factor where lambda is 5 and this lambda is 5 and here x is 8 divided by 8 factorial and if you solve this problem you should get 0.065 so the probability that I will get 8 hits in the next minute is 6.5 percent if the rate of hits is five per minute so i am looking for a probability x will equal eight which is larger than the rate of head so that probability will become smaller and smaller if i look at this if x is five here then eight i'm looking at the red then eight will be somewhere here so it gets smaller and smaller okay now let's look at this one. Particles are suspended in a liquid medium at concentration of 6 particles per milliliter. So now I can think of lambda as particle per unit space. So lambda 6 particles per 1 milliliter. A large volume of the suspension is thoroughly agitated and then three millimeters are withdrawn so we have here a large volume that has this rate so i did a very good mix then i took a small sample here of three milliliters now what's the probability that exactly 15 particles are withdrawn so now i want to find what's the probability x equal 15. Now we have to watch for the following. 
we want to know what's the probability x equal 15 in the 3 milliliter not x equal 15 per 1 milliliter so the question is how we solve this problem do we find the probability x equal 15 in 1 milliliter then we multiply it by 3 because I have 3 milliliter or do I find now this is my unit space it's not anymore per 1 milliliter now it's per 3 milliliter so now the probability should be read probability x equal 15 per 3 milliliter so let's find the new lambda then then we can solve it so the new lambda if in this big volume i think of it as six particle per one milliliter now here there will be three times six that's 18 so now it will be 18 particle per three milliliter so that's my new lambda and this is now my problem now i need to find the probability x equal 15 automatically it will be in the three milliliter in the unit volume which is three milliliter and to solve this problem it will be probability x equal 15 will be e minus lambda which is 18 time lambda x so that is 18 x is 15 divided by x factorial so that's 15 factorial and if you solve this you should get 0.0786 okay let's look at the estimation of the parameter lambda and uh, that we don't know and we need to estimate it so i just imagine you have an experiment and you want to estimate the rate of success in a certain experiment or like in the previous example the rate of hit of a website in one minute or the rate of bacteria growth in one milliliter volume so we want to know how to estimate that lambda so an easy way to estimate it, I will run the experiment maybe for t equal one minute or one hour. Then count how many success happened during that one minute. And then I will estimate lambda, the rate of success or the rate of occurrence as the number of success during that time interval divided by t. Or if it was rate of spread, it will be divided by s and s stand for space it could be the rate of spread in a unit area one meter square and that's how we estimate the rate of occurrence now the next question is what is the bias in this estimate and what's the uncertainty in this estimate and to solve these we can think of lambda we said x over t and if I think of x as the number of success and without mentioning per unit time, now I can think of it as the binomial distribution. And if I want to find the mean of lambda, it will be the mean of x divided by t. t is a constant. And if I think of x as the binomial, then the mean of x will be np. Now that's the number of success if it's a binomial but what if i put the constraint t i want the number of success in unit time then np time t that will give me the total number of success in one minute or in one hour divided by t and that cancel and np just lambda so the bias will be the estimate minus the real value we are trying to estimate when this case is the rate of success and we just found this the mean if i carry the experiment for a long time it just give me lambda so that's lambda minus lambda is zero so it is unbiased this type of estimate so it's good estimate method no bias now if i try to find the uncertainty same thing the variance of my estimate here is the variance of x divided by the constant t now it will be t squared because we said if y equals cx then the variance of y is c squared the variance of x so in this case my estimate here 
I can think of it as 1 over t x and 1 over t is a constant so that's where the t square came time the variance of x and again if I think of x as a binomial distribution then we found it to be the variance is n p time 1 minus p time t divided by t squared again we said p is very small so this is just n p and the t divided by t squared I have only t and if I find the standard deviation the uncertainty of this lambda now n p is just lambda over t square root and that is the uncertainty in our estimate and when you look at this uncertainty it makes sense if I want to reduce the uncertainty then I have to increase t that's the time of observation so if I want to estimate the rate of hit to a website instead of just watching 10 minutes maybe I should watch two hours and count how many hits then divide this by two hours that will give me a very good estimate of the rate of hits you increase t you reduce the uncertainty okay let's look at this example a certain mass of radioactive substance emits alpha particle at a mean rate of lambda particle per second a physicist counts 1594 emission in 100 seconds estimate lambda well lambda the rate of emission is he absorbed 1594 in 100 second so that is 15.94 emission in one second find the uncertainty in the estimate it is the square root of lambda divided by t well we don't know the real value for lambda here so we're gonna choose for it the estimate we found 15.94 divided by 100 and we should get 0.399 or just 0.4 if lambda is 15.94 then I will report it as 15.94 plus minus 0.4 if I want to reduce the uncertainty here then I have to increase t so they say for how many seconds should emission be counted to reduce the uncertainty to 0.3 emission per second so now I'm gonna solve this equation again but what's giving is the desired uncertainty which is 0.3 so we want to reduce it from 0.4 to 0.3 equal the square root lambda we found it the estimate is 15.94 divided by t and if you solve this t will be 15.94 divided by 0.3 squared and this should give you 177.11 second so if we want to reduce the uncertainty to 0.3 from 0.4 we have to carry out our observation from 100 second to 170 second all right i will stop here and in the next video we will talk about other distributions such as the geometric distribution thank you for watching and see you soon